First graders, it's spelling time and phonics. Phonics, just in case you ever wonder, where does that word come in? What does that word even mean? Phonics is really just talking about the sounds that letters make. So letters and sounds, phonics. Some words are phonetic. You can sound them out, like you can tap and pound and tap them out and sound them out. And words are spelled the way they sound. They're phonetic. Other words are not phonetic right? And we call those red words. We just have to memorize them. They are not spelled the way they're, the, the way that they sound. So today, I've noticed on your spelling test that you turned in that there are definitely some words we need to practice, and that's okay. That's why we're here. We're going to practice them. Here's what we're going to do today, though. We are going to get up and march the words. So I don't know if you know how to do that. I'll kind of teach you how to do that. And I want to start with an easier one, one that you might not need to practice so much. But um, let's see here. I've got a few that I know kids are getting mixed up on here. But let's just do the word by to get started. Okay, by. So stand up. You're going to need to stand up for a few minutes. I'm going to adjust my camera so you can see me better. There we go. And the word by is B-I. So watch my feet. The word by is B-Y. Did I say B-I? The word by is B-Y. So you're going to march like this. B-Y. And then you're going to jump and say the word by. Does that make sense? So B-Y, by. And we're going to do it three times. One more time then. B-Y, by. All right? So we'll see if I can keep going back and forth until we practice all of our words. No, I'm just kidding. We're not going to do all of them. Um, I'm going to focus mostly on some words kids struggled with, especially on their little spelling test. One of them was the word come. Okay. Now come, take a look at it. Come looks like this. It's C-O-M-E. If you were going to sound that out, it would be comb. And that's why we don't do it. It has an E. And the magic E at the end tells the O to say O. Oh. That's phonetic. That's the way the rules are supposed to be. This word does not follow those rules. And that's why it's a red word. So come, C-O-M-E. Now on your feet, on your feet, and here we go. Ready? I'll do my feet again for you. On your mark, get set, march. C-O-M-E, come. Did you jump? Do that again. C-O-M-E. Come. One more time. C O M E. Come. Very good. Making your body move, making your body move, and then at the same time spelling the sounds with your mouth, that's what's going to help you remember. One way we do that is with arm tapping. Come. C O M E. Come. That's also very good. But marching a word can be helpful too. So we practice come. Another one that kids had a little trouble with was the word who. Who are you? Take a look at who right here. W-H-O. Who. It has that W-H digraph, who. And if you sounded it out, it would just be ha, hua, or wa. <laughs> because W-H can just say the W sound. Anyway. It's W-H-O, get ready to march. Marching is the way we can practice these. Ready? Begin. W-H-O, who? Do it again, ready? W-H-O, who? And one more time. W-H-O, who? Now, where are you doing your feet? Like this. W-H-O, and jumping. Who? Make sure you do. When you spell who, that will help you to remember it. Friends, this is something, by the way, you could work on if you know you have some words that you need help with. Practice this way. Practice marching those words. Practice arm tapping those words, right? Practice, 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 practice. That's what it takes to get our red words. Another word is of, and I know it's backwards there, so I'll show it here instead. Of. Now, of, if you were to sound this out, would be ah, ah, like the word off. Um, or if you were to sound out of, you might spell it U-V. But of is spelled 
O F. Take a good look at it, and let's get ready to march on your feet. Here we go. O F of again. O F of one more time. O F of. Now, if you get really fancy, I'll show you a new marching trick. I'm going to move this chair out of the way. Here we go. Let's do another word here. Let's march the word from. The word from, take a look. Looks like this. From is F R O M, from. F R O M, from. Remembering, repeating again and again and again and again is what it takes. And when you're learning remotely, you're going to have to maybe work on those flashcards on your own time, right? We don't really have homework in Z Connect, but you certainly can work on those red word flashcards whenever you want, right? Let's march the word from. Do you remember it? I'll show you a trick on this one. Here we go. F R O M from. Again, F R O M from. Now, this time, when you march, when you jump, you're going to jump and spin. Here we go. Try with me. Ready? March. F R O M from. Whoa. Did you do it? Be careful that you don't fall over. Be kind of dangerous. All right, friends. Let's see. We've done four of them. Let's do five. I don't want to go too crazy. Let's do the word what. Like, what are you thinking, Mr. Ashby? How about the word what? Take a good look at it before we march it. W H A T what. Now this one has the W H digraph, kind of like who, except in this word what, we don't pronounce the H. I'll tell you what, 200 years ago in our country, people spoke with like a British accent because people had come over from England. And they might actually say the W H like this. What are you thinking? <laughs> what would you like for lunch? That's why we spell it this way with a WH, but we don't talk that way anymore. We just say what. So the H is kind of silent in this word. All right, let's see. We've looked at it enough and let's march it with a spin this time. On your mark, get set, march. W H A T, what? Again, W H A T, what? And again, this time with a spin, the third time's the spin. Here we go. W H A T, what? Whoa. Whew. I'm a little bit tired. My heart's pumping. It's good for me to get up and move, though. We, not, we all need to be doing that more and more and more. So, first graders, you can practice with your red flashcards. If you know that you've got some words that you maybe spelled incorrectly on your list and your parents can look at that because it's right in there in Seesaw, plus I'll be sending them out a list of words to work on with you too very soon. Those words you could practice marching and arm tapping. You could practice writing them. In fact, there's all sorts of different ways you can practice. And I shared a document that's laminated. I gave your parents uh, at the, you know, when we had the handout day so that they could practice red words all sorts of ways. Some of them are kind of fun. That's the point. We want to have fun while we're practicing these things too. Next on our list, when we do our spelling time, we practice red words for a little bit. We did that. Then we practice words and sounds. Today, I just want you to tell me what digraph makes the ch sound. Ch. Did you say ch? Well, then you are correct. Good job. How about this one? What digraph makes the sh sound? Did you say sh? Well, then you're right. Sh shark. Good. And last, what digraph makes the sound? Hmm. Why did Mr. Ashby cover his mouth when he did it? Well, that's because I didn't want you to see my tongue, but I'll let you see now. My tongue is touching my top teeth. Sometimes I put my lip under my tongue. And if you're guessing the TH, then you are correct. 
Today, in fact, we're going to be uh, playing a little game with the TH sound. Check it out. TH can sound an awful lot like the letter F, like this. Can you tell if that was a TH or an F? Listen again. What do you think? That was a TH. Now, what if I try it with an F? Can you hear a difference? If not, don't feel bad because I just tricked you. That was also a TH. Now, now I'll do it with an F for real this time. Now I'm doing an F sound. Well, friends, it's really hard to tell the difference between an F and a TH. And here's the problem. It doesn't get any easier because TH can also sound like a voice, like this word, this. Look at my tongue, this. And so that's a voiced TH, And you can probably guess, what does that sound like? Well, listen. It sounds like a V. So TH can sound like a V or an F. And that is a huge problem. We're going to play a little game right now. Get ready because if you think the word starts with a TH, then you are going to jump and spin out of your seat. If you think the word starts with an F or a V, you're going to sit still like this. Here we go. I'm going to cover my mouth the first time so you can't tell. Here we go. The first word is the word them. Them. What are you going to do? Are you going to jump and spin? You should because if I do it like this, them, that has a T-H. Now, if you're saying it yourself, I like them, and you're saying it correctly, your tongue is between your teeth. But if you're saying, I like them, you might be saying it with a V. So check in a mirror sometime. Say these words in a mirror and watch your mouth. Or just listen and feel for your tongue and your teeth. All right, next word. Are you ready? Victory. Victory. If you're sitting like this, then you're good. Victory. Victory starts with a V. All right, all right, all right, all right. Here we go. How about the word? Fat. Fat. Just like this. No moving because the word was fat. That's an F. Like a fat cat. Good? Now listen to this word. Think. Think. What do you think? You should jump and spit it out, oh my goodness, because the word was think. You say it. Think. Your tongue should be between your teeth. Think. Like, I think I can. I think I can. If you notice yourself saying it with an F, think. Like, I think I can. I think I can. That's something we need to fix. We need to practice saying it the right way. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's do one more, ready? One more. The word, ah, we'll do two more. We'll do two more. How about this one, ready? They. They. Do you have any idea? Yes, you need to jump and spin because the word was they. Look at my tongue and my teeth. They. <laughs> so, they has a TH at the beginning, not they. Some kids will say it with a V on accident. So be careful the way that you say it. All right, one more, one more. Here we go. The, the next word is van. Van. Sitting still on that one. Van, like I drove the van. That's a V. v. So being careful, friends, to listen for T-H or V. And if you're not sure, 
ask a dad, ask a mom, ask grandma or grandpa, whoever is near you, does that a V or a TH? Because you might be just saying it wrong. Lots of kids say words wrong because when they're two, it's cute when they say a different word. Mama, I thought I knew the answer. And we as dads and moms, we go, oh, you're so cute. But now's the time we need to start fixing that because otherwise we're going to be spelling words incorrectly if we're not fixing that. So TH, those are the words. In fact, we're going to work on with our dictation. We're going to finish up our dictation. So please find your dictation page. And we have just sentence number three to write. Before we do, I'm going to push pause. If you need to, you can push pause and find your dictation page sheet. Boop. Boop. All right. So first graders, you have unpaused if you're ready. I'd like to read all of these words. In fact, you read them out loud with me. Ready? Number one, shut. Number two, chip. Number three, mash. Number four, such. Number five, dish. Number six, chin. Number seven, shin. Number eight, chat. Number nine, this. Number 10, moth. Make sure your tongue is in the right place. Number 11, that. Number 12, path. Sentence number one, read that with me, ready? Begin. Can she shut the shop? And number two, Chad is such a sad chum. <laughs> so with all of those we were working on these digraphs, CH and SH, and now TH. TH is our last one. So, sentence number three is going to be written right here. Get your pencil ready, and we're going to write it right here. Of course, we'll pound it first. We'll pound it first. Trying not to make too long of a sentence. I'm trying to shorten one up. This bath is hot for Beth. This bath is hot for Beth. Let's pound that together for a minute before you write it. Ready? Pound. This bath is hot for Beth. Do that one more time. This bath is hot for Beth. How about one more time? That will help you remember it. Here we go. This bath is hot for Beth. Now I'll help you a little bit because I know sometimes it's hard to remember. The first word is this. And you're tapping the word if you need to. This. Your next word is bath. Don't forget about spaces between your words and tapping if you need to. This bath. The next word is is. And the next word is hot. Maybe you don't have room to write hot, so you can write it down here. Hot. And again, you can tap to spell hot. Let's reread. Start at the beginning. You have this bath is hot for Beth. Those are the last two words. For Beth. Make sure you're tapping if you need to sound out a word. First graders, if you are finished, what I'm going to do is check this sentence number three on Seesaw. So I'll check number three on Seesaw. Let me give you a quick reminder. This symbol is to remind us for capital letters. This symbol is to remind us for periods, punctuation. We have good spaces between our words. 
this pat this bath is hot for beth and let me give you one more reminder the word beth the word beth is a name and i think you know what to do if there's a name of something make your fixes make sure it's good in seesaw you're going to take a picture of your page and put it into seesaw on page two of your seesaw activity and then your spelling work is done